Isabel and McKelty, Christine's daughters, just celebrated their birthdays, and so they all kind of got together to celebrate. And by all, I mean, like, everyone except for Peyton. So, Christine's only son. Where are you, Peyton? I haven't seen Peyton in Christine's pictures in a long time. And so I went to look for Peyton. Where else? TikTok, his favorite thing. And I was surprised to see that he actually has not posted since like March and hasn't really been active on Instagram in a while. Kind of suspicious because Peyton especially loves TikTok. So yeah, I hope he's okay. Wondering if he just kind of stopped everything social media because things got toxic after he was like saying stuff on lives and in interviews and stuff or if he felt he went too far. Um, I don't know. I mean, he did kind of insinuate that he thinks his mom is moving too fast and all these things and etc. So Christine also said that her and David got some engagement pictures done at a beautiful location. Can't wait to see the pics. Now let's talk about the headlines about Christine and let me know what you guys think is true out of all of these. So this one is from The Sun. It says, is Christine okay? Sister wives Christine Brown looks somber as she cooks solo meal after she has been seen crying and ditching engagement ring. The article says that basically Christine was spotted without her engagement ring and wiping her face. Literally could have been an eyelash, but honestly, Christine is currently vacationing with David, so I don't really think there's trouble in paradise. That's my opinion. Maybe she had just talked to Cody, and that's why she's somber. I mean, could have been anything. Like, honestly, one cannot be chipper at all times. Sometimes things will happen. Sometimes you'll cry. And I don't think everyone likes to wear their rings, like, all the time, especially when they're, like, really expensive. Anyways, another article from OK Magazine said, Sister Wives star Christine Brown celebrates daughter's birthday without fiancé David Woolley following split rumors. Okay, so split rumors? Did I miss a Reddit post or something? Christine doesn't always do everything with David. Like, historically, she's with her kids without him a lot. I mean, is there some type of rule that fiancés need to be tied to the hip at all times? I just personally don't think there's enough here to say there are split rumors. But um, anyways, they're literally in Nashville, like, taking selfies right now, so... I think everything's okay. I mean, you never know. I mean, this could be right. I don't know. Anyways, this one's from Cafe Mom. It says, Sister Wives star Cody Brown, angry ex Christine, move their daughter in with strange man. So apparently an insider said that Cody is mad that Christine is living with David out of wedlock at the moment. I mean, they're engaged. And I mean, the audacity, if this is true, the audacity. I mean, Cody, Cody literally was courting a fourth wife while Christine was pregnant, you know, um, and technically three of his wives were out of wedlock, so the whole wedlock argument doesn't really have legs for him. Um, but anyways, we don't know who the insider is. Like, we always have to take articles like this, like, kind of with a skeptical eye, right? All right, guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel and I'll be back with more content. Bye guys. Can we just have a quick sister wives update about the pictures from Savannah Brown's graduation? Because it looks like the most awkward family situation ever. There were clearly two very divided groups at this graduation. I'm sure you could have probably cut the tension with the knife and flagstaff that day. So in this corner, you had Cody with really bouncy curls that day, by the way. He did show up for his little girl as he should. There's no way to confirm if Robin was there or not. I mean, people could just want to not be in pictures and stuff like that. And in the other corner, 
you have basically people who have very tense and strained relationships with Cody in various ways for various reasons. There's Gwendolyn, who has been holding nothing back on her YouTube channel, calling him manipulative and admitting that she's not a fan of Robin, and it's not even clear if he's going to even go to her wedding. We have Garrison and Gabriel. This played out on the show. They literally butted heads with Cody since the pandemic. Cody seemed super kind of cold towards them, in my opinion, not understanding that they wanted social lives as young men and kind of insisted that they just up and move out or whatever. There's just a lot of anger on both sides there. And there's Janelle, who is recently separated from Cody. So that being said, super happy for Savannah. Janelle and Cody's youngest. She really has been a trooper living with Janelle in the RV for a while. She would have been with her mom, the only child living at home during Janelle's breakup. And she seems like a super sweet girl. So based on these pictures, though, Perhaps the most obvious sign of drama and trouble for me is that they didn't take that classic family picture with like Janelle, Cody, and Savannah together because you'll remember that Christine and Cody took a picture like that with Isabel at her graduation even though things weren't good at all with them. So it's just kind of a picture that you take, right? So Janelle posted these pictures with this caption and also kind of imply that things just weren't perfect at the graduation and that things are different now. So she actually also disactivated the comments, which is always a sign of like, yeah, she didn't want to hear the comments, the anti-Cody stuff. So she said, Savannah has graduated. My children are all grown up. Such a beautiful day. There was definitely a difference with this graduation versus others in the past, but all is well. Headed to Utah this weekend to throw a big party for her with most of her siblings. Which is great because I know that Christine probably can't wait for that party because I remember in earlier seasons, Christine definitely had a big hand in raising Savannah, uh, especially when she was little. And Savannah on her feed posted pictures and said anticlimactic. So I don't know what she meant by anticlimactic. Like, of course she was going to graduate. She's like a smart girl. That could be it. Or anticlimactic meaning that there were arguments or something. I don't know. But here's to a bright future for Savannah. And I'm absolutely sure that she's going to excel in everything she does. All right, guys, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed. Bye, guys. This is a Sister Wives update for May 2023. This month, fans think Janelle has a new boyfriend, Mary escaped to the UK, and let's talk about secret weddings. So let's start with Janelle this month. This month, Janelle set up her trailer somewhere that is not Coyote Pass, thank God. And fans actually thought that maybe her new boyfriend was hiding in plain sight in this picture. See, see the legs? Anyways, but Janelle just had to reply back and shut down fans that thought that before the blogs went crazy. And she said, haha, no, it's Gabe. But my children and grandchildren are the true loves of my life. Honestly, Janelle is so independent and the whole lovey-dovey aspect of a relationship never seemed to be like her thing. So I could see her just staying single for a while. I don't think Janelle will be getting into any whirlwind romances anytime soon. We shouldn't hold our breath for that. Janelle recently went to Utah, I'm assuming to visit Christine, and she went on her stories about how the lilacs are just better there and she misses them. She even brought like a bouquet back to her hotel room, hoping maybe she could also bring them on the plane with her to Flagstaff. Janelle then was in Utah again, like a day ago, and she posted a story and said she was there to play with Christine, David, Savannah, and some friends. Play, guys. Play. And, you know, Janelle could sort of randomly be in Utah twice in a month, 
But I also would not even be surprised if Christine got married or something because she's moving so fast with David and I just get the feeling she wants to get married as fast as possible. So every time I see Janelle in Utah, I'm like, oh, did it happen? I guess we'll find out when the People magazine pictures come out, right? So we'll see. Either way, there is clearly no truth to the rumor that there's a feud between Christine and Janelle. Janelle has literally traveled to Utah twice in one month. I mean, based on social media evidence. But I digress. For now, though, Janelle's number one companion in Flagstaff seems to be Gabriel, who's helping her quite a lot with her trailer. If you liked Gabriel, then you'll really like him now because he seems to be really stepping up to the plate for his mom. And also worth mentioning, Garrison's usually there too helping, but Garrison's actually traveling in Italy at the moment. He went to Rome and saw the Colosseum. So he's on like, I don't know if it's a solo trip or what. Janelle gave an update on her trailer and said, the trailer is ready to go for the summer. Yes, it took a few weeks. Some of it was finding the time to break away and drive up there. Even though once I hit the road, I'm always glad I did. Some of it is the self-doubt that still creeps in and tells me I'm crazy for breaking out of my routine and trying something really outside my box. Telling myself that it's hard, it's so much easier to stay here and to do the same old, same old, but there is so much waiting for us when we step out. I wonder why we overthink and overworry the things designed to bring joy and offer even more empowerment. Tawanda. She's been saying Tawanda a lot. It's like, it's like live life to the fullest type of situation. All right. So good for Janelle. Good for Janelle. Very excited for her. Meanwhile, Christine went to Disneyland in California again with David Truly and Isabel. And they looked like they had fun family time there. She said, had a blast in California Adventure and Disneyland. Club 33 was awesome. Let me know what Club 33 is. I have no idea. Christine was just in California, though, like a month ago. So she's repeating the trip, I guess. Last time she went to Universal Studios. So interesting that she's back a few weeks later, but this time with Isabel. Anyways, Van did have a lot to say about 13-year-old Truly and how she was kind of leaning away from David in a picture and looked bored in another picture. But I think people forget that Truly is 13 and, you know, teenagers all act like all sorts of ways and all sorts of moods all the time. So and also, yeah, like I am sure she's adjusting to having a new father figure in her life, like a stepdad and also in the public. So everything's like under a microscope. Christine also went with her girls to get supplies to Taylor Gwendolyn's wedding dress recently. And surprise, Gwendolyn went live in the store and Christine tried to act cool, but it did kind of seem like the live was like sprung on to them. They probably didn't um, expect to go live in like a, a store, like a random store, but it was entertaining to watch. Gwenlet also received this art from Audrey, as in Leo's fiance. It's a pretty drawing of her and her fiance, B. Not sure when Gwen is getting married, but probably also soon. And hey, they did like a joint wedding with Chrissy and David. That would save on cost. Could you imagine TV gold, I think? TV gold, that thing. But um, yeah, honestly, people do think that maybe Gwen had a secret wedding. So I don't know what's true, what's not. Speaking of truly, seems like her school is at walking distance from Christine and David's new house. Christine posted this picture, which apparently is on the way to the school. And yeah, wheat fields, guys, wheat fields are on the way. So let's go to Mary. So Mary had a pretty big month. She literally escaped the sister wives drama and went all the way to the UK on her own and documented the whole thing on Instagram. She was there on some type of business retreat trip, but also a solo trip. 
super exciting. So she went to Paddington Station and somehow is obsessed with Paddington Bear, by the way. Did not know this about Mary. She went to Buckingham Palace and said that she felt uncomfortable taking pictures in front of someone's house. But then, you know, people from the UK were like, yeah, no one lives there anymore. So not an issue there. She went on a double-decker bus, saw Big Ben. She even went to Stonehenge and says that she's been obsessed with Stonehenge for like most of her life. She met some horse and probably traveled by horse-drawn carriage, went to the White Tower and even took a picture with this man. I'm sure mixed in some business in there too. I saw she was like working out with a group and like sitting down with a group. I don't know. But at the end of her big trip to the UK, she said, Well, London, you've been quite good to me indeed. Business accomplished, dreams fulfilled, memories made, lots of good food, many miles walked, time with amazing friends, solo reflections and grand adventures, and now back home where I I can jump in full force to the business plans I created here. I'm so excited for the future, so excited to see my plans and goals come to fruition and my dreams become reality. And in more Mary news, of course she posted a cryptic quote this month on her Instagram stories, this time about having high standards. But as she should, after her somewhat predictable breakup with Cody, some articles actually thought that this was like a swipe at Cody, actually, but can a girl just post a post, like a, a quote, sorry. Yeah, curious to see if Mary will have a new boyfriend soon, like Christine, but honestly, like for Janelle and Mary, like no pressure, uh, like there shouldn't be any pressure on them. They're dealing with a lot, right? So yeah. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening the whole way through. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Mary Brown from Sister Wives has escaped the U.S. and the drama, and she's enjoying a trip to London, England at the moment. This is where she is now, and she's keeping us updated on what she's seeing and doing while she's there. So this is a special behind the scenes update on Mary's trip to the UK. Seems like she's there for business training or some type of business retreat. You know, Mary's all about the money. Well, not all about the money, but her business. And she likes retreats. So it all makes sense, right? So let me show you what Mary has been up to in the UK on the heels of her big move back to Utah and her breakup with Cody. Mary flew to the UK through Heathrow Airport and let us know how excited she was about her trip, honestly. She did mention it on her Fridays with Friends with Jen. She said, adventuring, it's what I love to do, saying yes to seeing new places, saying yes to meeting new people, saying yes to doing unexpected things, saying yes to building businesses while having fun saying yes to the unexpected, saying yes to a week of clarity and personal growth, saying yes to getting to see my lifelong obsession, London, here I come. So what is she talking about lifelong obsession? Do you think she's talking about the royal family? Does Mary follow all the drama with the royals? What is the lifelong obsession? That's my question. Here's what she posted about what she did her first day along with pictures. So she said, first day in London complete, 7.30 a.m. Arrival left plenty of time to get some sightseeing in. I'm a huge Paddington fan, so of course Paddington Station was on top of my list. Okay, so is that the obsession? Seriously. I had some mixed emotions about Buckingham Palace pretty awesome place to visit and also felt very awkward to parade in front of someone's home and take a picture just to say I had been there. I was surprised at the uncomfortable emotions that came up to me. The walk through the park and Princess Diana Memorial Walk was beautiful. Lots of green and blooming floral. This little critter was so cute. Jumped right up on the fence as I walked past and let me get super close to him as I had a little conversation with him. So there you have it. 
Mary, day one, had a conversation with the squirrel. Felt uncomfortable at Buckingham Palace. Probably because I bet you people come to the B&B and also do that. Like, take a picture in front of someone else's property or whatever. Maybe she has weird feelings about that. I feel like that's where that comes from. And of course, you can't go to London without seeing Big Ben and Westminster Abbey. Such beautiful and amazing architecture. The whole day was filled with amazing sights and good local food. So excited for the rest of the week and the amazing sights, experiences, and conversations in store. Okay, and now let's go to day two, shall we? London, day two. Started off with business building, by the way, I'm so excited for mine, and training with the amazing Danelle Delgado, followed by more epic training. Yep, it looks like on day two there was some working out happening and inspiration. She said, after a good workout, we did a little more sightseeing and shopping. This place is amazing, y'all. P.S. If anyone knows where I can get my hands on a cute Paddington figurine like this one, only quite a bit smaller, please let me know. I'm obsessed. Okay, so it is the Paddington bear obsession. That's so interesting. Mary talked about how excited she was for her trip on Fridays with friends um, with Jen, and it seems like a good time for her to get away. And it looks like these retreats really make Mary feel good and stay positive, so I'm all for it. Might also mean that she's done filming for a while, perhaps, or done for the season. I don't know. But the Danelle Delgado, by the way, I've seen Mary talk about her before, and she is well known for training entrepreneurs, and she's also like a motivational speaker, I believe. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed my Mary update about her trip to the UK. Let me know what you think in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye. On Sister Wives, the Brown family has had a crazy amount of drama, but nothing compares to the drama in the feuds in the family. In this video, I'll be taking an in-depth look at four major feuds on Sister Wives. They are... Mary versus Janelle, Peyton versus Chuva's sisters, Cody versus Gabriel and Garrison, and of course, we have a Christine versus Robin situation. But before I dive in, please subscribe and like this video, like right now! Let's start with Mary and Janelle. Janelle and Mary's feud dates back to like the 90s. <laughs> Janelle was married to Mary's brother, Adam, and when their marriage ended, Sparks began to fly, and Cody and Janelle started courting. So immediately, you know, Janelle said that when she met Cody, she had the strangest feeling and felt as if she had forgotten something and suddenly remembered it. Kind of like how people describe, you know, soulmate situations. It's been said multiple times that even from early on, Janelle and Mary butted heads. And that Janelle kind of even toned down the PDA with Cody very early on because it felt kind of uncomfortable. In the book Becoming Sister Wives, Janelle said that housekeeping was a major problem between her and Mary. She said that Mary and Cody would actually gang up on her and insisted that she clean the house in the evening while she was like kind of like trying to relax, I guess. Things got so bad that after a really bad fight with Mary, Janelle moved away with her kids to her mother's house and then agreed to come back because they were moving into the Lehigh house that had more space and like a full yard and everything. So it kind of lured her back in. There was some type of rumbling on the show about Mary like restricting access to her side of the house in Lehigh or something about using her steps to the point where Janelle was worried that in Flagstaff, like in Coyote Pass, Mary could restrict the kids from going to the pond if they if she lived like next to it. So she was trying to like restrict Mary from living next to it, which was sounded ridiculous to me at the time because A, the pond is disturbing and disgusting. B like, who the heck cares about the pond that probably has prairie dog poop in it with plague? 
Like, I, I never understood why Janelle is so passionate about the pond. Either way, Mary and Janelle actually went to therapy together. And on the way there, they rode separately. And they, so they rode separately to therapy when they used to live in the cul-de-sac, which was basically like the same general area, showing how close they actually are. I mean, it couldn't be done. They couldn't ride together. It was too weird. Mary also said something kind of interesting one time on Anderson Cooper's show a long time ago because Anderson actually doesn't even have that show anymore. She had told Anderson that Janelle threatened her less than Christine in terms of jealousy because she kind of saw Janelle's relationship with Cody as more of like a friendship and Christine's was more like romantic. Ouch. Okay, so... Next feud, we're talking about Peyton versus Gwendolyn and Leon. So Peyton, who is the son of Christine and Cody, their only son actually, had like a social media squabble in 2020 when he posted something on social to support the police, basically. It was like, anyways, and Audrey, Leon's fiance, replied in the comments saying something like they couldn't believe what he was posting. A fan had made a comment about it, and Peyton ended up replying that he loved Leon, but they can't stand each other, apparently. So there you have it. Peyton and Gwendolyn also have a feud, and this one seems a bit more serious and probably difficult for Christine to manage. It almost seems to me like they don't even attend the same family events anymore, mostly. Peyton admitted on TikTok that he and Gwen had some kind of type of like physical altercation at one point and then now Gwen is scared of him. Then Gwen ad addressed Peyton's interviews about the show. At the time Peyton did something with like John Yates etc and uh, she said something pretty scathing actually. She said he's the most awful person I've ever had the displeasure of knowing and I would strongly advise taking anything he says as fact. I would advise against giving him any kind of support, even if you're watching the kind of content he puts out. I mean, that's pretty brutal. Like, the most awful person she's ever met about her brother. I mean, that's not good. I mean, not sure how long these two are going to feud, but it doesn't look good. Which I'm sure is super stressful for Christine having two of her kids basically have this long-standing feud. Okay, so now let's go to Robin Brown and Christine Brown. So Christine was pregnant when Cody was courting Robin, which in itself didn't really start things off the right foot. In their book, Becoming Sister Wise, Christine wrote, Cody and Robin's courtship came at a time of huge personal upheaval. I was pregnant with Truly, and we had also entered new and uncharted territory as we began filming Sister Wise for TLC. When Cody started courting and then married Robin, it really rocked me. I gave birth to Truly and was suffering from extreme postpartum depression. I never thought I'd feel such a sense of loss and such crippling jealousy. I, th I thought I was better and stronger than that. I really did. And the jealousy kind of continued. Christine had a major issue with Cody picking Robin's wedding dress and the fact that they went on a 10-day honeymoon and kissed before marriage. The 10-day honeymoon, by the way, they went on. I mean, she had a, gen I mean, Christine had a newborn at home, so she was kind of in a vulnerable stage for sure, but I completely understand. For Christine, it was just always super hard for her to see a functional marriage for Robin while hers was kind of struggling, which is completely understandable. I, it would have driven me nuts too. And therefore, you know, Robin and Christine just never connected or something. And when Christine left the family, she made it clear that she needed space and told Robin that Robin took it so personally, crying in the driveway and all that, it did not go well. Christine also notoriously called out Robin for having a nanny during the pandemic. She couldn't understand what the nanny actually did. What does the nanny do? The famous line, which makes sense because if you think about it, Christine used to raise like 12 kids and three of Robin's kids are fully grown. 
So the nanny can only really be for the two, and Robin doesn't have a job, only the show, so she has a bunch of free time. I mean, we're assuming, or by perception, it may not be true, but anyways. And finally, let's go to the feud between Cody and his sons, Garrison and Gabriel. This one, I would argue, totally caused by Cody getting crazy during the pandemic or something, or... Anyways, big conflict there. The whole thing goes that Gabriel insisted that he and his girlfriend, Peyton, should be able to see each other during the pandemic. And Cody was super worried about it. He basically was saying, if you see your girlfriend, I can't come over and see your mom. Gabriel and Cody were at a complete impasse about the rules. And Gabriel even kind of talked about how he thought maybe Robin made up the rules. It was a whole thing. And then Cody called Gabriel when he was sick to ask him about symptoms, but forgot that it was his birthday. All in all, don't understand why Cody isn't more attentive to his relationships with his older children. I mean, they're amazing. I just, it was hard to see them not understand each other at all. Another son that Cody is kind of feuding with is Garrison, Janelle's other son, who also had a lot to say about the rules Garrison argued that he also wanted to have a social life, you know, during the pandemic. And Cody insisted that he should move out. But Janelle wanted him to stay home so he could save for a house, which is totally understandable. Any mom would do that. Garrison actually did buy a house in Arizona. He's a homeowner of a four bedroom and two bathroom home. So I guess Janelle kind of won in this case. Cody said at the reunion that he is still angry at the boys. He said, we need therapy. I've gotten to the point where I'm so angry about what happened that we're not communicating. And I think they are too. Yeah, like maybe a little bit of therapy would be helpful. Like, I just honestly, can we all get along? I mean, some of these views are so historical to the family. Like they're long standing, but kind of interesting to talk about. So I appreciate you guys watching the whole way through, and if you like this video, give it a like, and please subscribe to my channel for more Sister Wives content. Bye guys! Let's take a look at the Sister Wives kids and where they are now in May 2023. More specifically, let's talk about the daughters in the family, Aspen, Maddie, McKelty, Isabel, Gwendolyn, and Savannah. And spoiler alert, Gwendolyn this month went live when she was with most of her sisters this month in a store randomly, and it was kind of awkward. We'll talk about that later. But please, before I begin, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video. It does help me a lot. Thank you. Let's start with Maddie or Madison, Cody and Janelle's oldest daughter, who's happily married to Kayla Brush and now has three kids, Axel, Evangeline, and Josephine, the little baby. She lives the farthest away from the family in North Carolina in a very nice house, so Christine and Janelle make multiple trips every year to visit her. Meanwhile, Cody, I'm not sure when his last trip to visit Maddie was. Recently, though, her sister Savannah went to visit, and yes, they look identical, like twins. They look so much like Janelle. Recently, we found up some pretty interesting facts in her Instagram Q&As. We found out that Maddie probably wants more kids or at least one more. She says a family of four kids just seems to fit. Maddie also says she doesn't see North Carolina as a forever thing for her family. She said it probably won't be a forever home unless divine intervention happens. We both miss the snow and the mountains. So Caleb and Maddie are aiming to maybe eventually buy land in northern Wyoming or southern Montana in the future. And that's their family dream. She said that they want to have like livestock and just live a quiet life. It almost sounds like Maddie literally wants to have another brown ranch. Remember Cody's parents' ranch in Wyoming? She also revealed what Caleb does for a living because I don't think that we've ever learned this. Like, I had no idea, but he fixes elevators, guys. So he's like an elevator mechanic, which is actually a pretty decent job, to be honest. But fun fact, 
Maddie is like some of her moms as well. She's involved in selling for Plexus, just like Janelle and Christine. All I know is that they have this pink drink and they shake this thing and yeah. <laughs> McKelty, Christine and Cody's daughter, is also happily married to Tony Padron, lives in Utah, and uh, her Instagram feed is kind of full of baby pictures of her twins and daughter Avalon. And because of her close relationship with Robin, because she used to babysit Robin's kids, McKelty seems to be perhaps closer connected to Cody than a lot of the other kids, which is interesting. McKelty revealed on her Patreon this month that she doesn't think that Cody will take on more wives. She also went on a shopping trip with Gwendolyn so they could fix her wedding dress. So they were all at a store because McKelty knows how to sew. Apparently she's excellent at it and went to school for it, Gwendolyn was saying. And Gwendolyn then decided to just like randomly go live on Instagram. And although none of her sisters were seemed thrilled about like even being in the video, you could hear them kind of looking for items, etc. At one point, McKelty told Gwendolyn to be nice and basically seemed to like scold her, but couldn't really say anything because they were live. And some of the sisters seemed to like not even know that they were on a live. Like, that's not good. That's like an ambush. Aspen was actually there too. And she clearly didn't want anything to do with the live, but Gwendolyn kept saying like, say hello, say hello. And she finally did say hello. McKelty and Aspen continued to be close. And the only picture we have of Aspen from very recent times is at an Easter celebration holding some type of mimosa, which is cute. And people in the comments were like, gas, is that champagne? Like, let her live, people. Let her live. Aspen, Cody and Christine's daughter, remains happily married to her husband, Mitch, who everyone adores. And it just seems like Aspen is very career oriented and is private. Meanwhile, Isabel seems like she's thriving, guys. She recently posted about getting grapefruits from her aunt Cindy in New Jersey. She's going hiking and she likes to hang out with Gwendolyn. I think they're very close. So McKelty and Aspen are close and Isabel and Gwendolyn are close. As far as we know, she's still going to the University of Utah. Gwenlyn has a lot going on. She's been in so many headlines for things she said on her YouTube channel, which is doing super good for her though, so that's good. For example, she basically said that Janelle was like a type of father figure for her. She kind of insinuated that when she was watching season one, episode one. She said, my mom was more of the, mo the mother mom, you know, stereotypical mother roles. And Janelle was more of the father mom with stereotypically father roles. Gwendolyn also just went on a cruise with her fiance, B. They are getting married pretty soon, probably. And therefore, why McKelty was working on her dress or altering it or whatever. She mentioned that she may go with one of her brothers walking her down the aisle, which is interesting, instead of Cody. And I mean, Cody and Robin didn't go to her engagement party or anything. There's some distance there for sure. I mean, I assume it's pretty tense, especially considering how public Gwendolyn is, like just speaking her mind about everything. I also kind of wonder if she'll invite her own brother, Peyton, because we know that there is conflict there, guys. There is some type of friction. I mean, every family has these dynamics where certain people get along, certain people don't, but it gets complicated when it's, you know, like 18 children. Unfortunately, I don't have an update on Robin's daughters and stuff like that. I mean, they're so private. We kind of know, like, they go to school and they kind of still very likely live with Robin and Cody and they're kind of doing that whole thing so we'll just leave it at that and truly is absolutely thriving with you know David and Christine and you know they just went to Universal and on trips and apparently truly likes David so it's all good all right so the sister wives daughters have grown up to become strong independent and driven women so I think 
you guys can join me in wishing them well. And, uh, you know, I can't wait to see where life takes them. They're all so good. I mean, honestly, what the family did is they raised really good kids. So I think they did something right, guys. They did something right. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more updates on your favorite TLC shows. And I'll be back very soon with more Sister Wives stuff and content. I appreciate you guys. Bye! Today, we're diving into the world of Sister Wives and their land, Coyote Paths. There are a million reasons why Coyote Pass is a broken dream for Cody, Mary, Janelle, and Robin. Let's take a closer look at the property itself and the controversies. The Brown family's move to Coyote Pass has been an ongoing storyline on the show. The property is a stunning 20-acre piece of land with breathtaking views of the mountains and valleys, a place where the wise famously said, they heard angels sing. Well, the angels are probably not singing anymore. Here are the many reasons why perhaps the Coyote Pass dream and the fantasy of it all is officially over. Janelle, the Coyote Pass certified number one fan, seems to have thrown in the towel on Coyote Pass. Of course, it's more complicated since she separated from Cody recently. For many years, Janelle has desperately tried to move things forward and make her fantasy of having greenhouses and building a house on her parcel of land a reality. She had her house drafted. No one seemed to care, by the way. She lived in a trailer on the property to have a presence there and sacrificed not having electricity. Literally lived off grid. They still didn't pay off the land at the time, and there's no indication that it's paid now. According to Janelle, money was going to other things. I mean, they just didn't seem focused like they were for building the houses in the cul-de-sac in Vegas, in my opinion. Things have changed, and Janelle seems content with her new place, by the way, with a patio, and she will be taking her trailer elsewhere this year. She said, the place I'm living now has a great patio. I've always wanted a great patio where it wasn't so blazing hot um, Vegas so you could sit outside. So I splurged on some patio furniture this year and I'm loving my coffee on the patio this cool, peaceful Sunday morning. And for those wondering about the trailer, stay tuned. I actually have put it in a seasonal space this year and will begin the adventure of managing the trailer as an independent woman. At least it has hookups this time around. It's always been something I wanted to do. As they say in the movie Fried Green Tomatoes, Tawanda. The Tawanda reference basically is something you say to feel empowered. And no empowered woman wants to live next to their ex let's say, on Coyote Pass. So, Tawanda, Janelle, Tawanda. Also, Janelle gave a lot of money from the sale of her house in Vegas to Robin and Cody for them to buy their almost million dollar house back in 2019, which was shocking to hear, honestly. She could probably use the money from the land to get a house of her own, just saying. Cody bought Coyote Pass in 2018 for $820,000 with the intention of splitting the property so that everyone gets a parcel. That being said, Christine obviously sold her piece of land for $10 in exchange for the money from the sale of her house, so she's completely out of it, of course. But if Coyote Pass fails entirely, a storyline they've been using for years will be completely over and so anticlimactic, by the way. I feel like we've waited years to see something get built there. They argued and butted heads about building one big house for everyone. That was a storyline, which was secretly what Cody wanted. They then argued about who was in the parcel in the trees. They had the property lines completely redone. And of course, they had a lot of awkward sit downs on the property as well on the show. You know, it was difficult times. 
so much stalling since 2018. But now, the ladies are living such separate lives. McKelty recently said that she couldn't even see the four women, women being somewhere together unless it was like a family obligation, like a wedding or a funeral. Mary apparently moved to Utah and was spotted with moving trucks at her bed and breakfast with Cody. I mean, she's out of there, it seems, anyway. Why would Coyote Pass make sense for her at all now? She didn't even seem that interested about being on the property from the get-go. She looked to me like she was, she had to be convinced. And I mean, Cody and Robin live nearby in a really nice house, so they're comfortable. There are actually reports that Cody may have the moving itch and may want to move out of Flagstaff altogether. And someone asked Gwendolyn about it on YouTube and she gave an answer. She said, he doesn't like to stay anywhere for too long. That's what happened with Utah. He got tired of Las Vegas and she kind of theorized that because of family history in Flagstaff, you know, it could make Cody miserable to be there. So, which makes sense. There are some bad memories for sure in Flagstaff. And given how freely he likes to move all the time, I mean, it's so not far-fetched that he actually would. So, where does that even leave Coyote Pass? Seems like, still to this day, and about five years after they moved to Flagstaff, nothing significant is built there, and the whole thing has just, in my opinion, just fallen apart in the saddest way. Hopefully they address this on season eight and we find out the fate of the property. Cootie Pass is just sitting there and literally we've been watching four seasons of Cootie Pass storyline, um, perhaps for nothing, who knows. I feel like they're not selling it yet because maybe it's, maybe it's embarrassing quite frankly and it's just so depressing that their dream you know, might be done on that property. So who knows what's going to happen? Stay tuned, everybody. There's also the controversial fact that perhaps Robin just owns a bigger cut of land. Yes, that's right. Not only is Robin the favorite wife, she also seems to have the most assets of any wife on Coyote Pass. Um, this was reported by like multiple blogs and I believe celeb talk guy um, who had done like a divvy up of who owns what. And after Christine left, apparently the stat that was reported was 52% owned by Robin, which kind of seems crazy because not only does she then have a million dollar house that the wives basically help pay for and you know it's crazy that she also has the more most assets on coyote paths make it make sense right like doesn't that seem unfair to you let me know your thoughts in the comments all right guys thanks so much for listening to my coyote pass update please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more sister wives news updates what have you Bye, guys! This is a Sister Wives update for April 2023. Let's catch up with Christine, Janelle, Mary, and all the big family drama this month. So this month, Christine's fiancé, David, threw shade directly at Cody. Janelle crashed Garrison's birthday party. Mary clarified her sexuality. And Cody's probably not having a good month, just saying. So let's start with the fact that David mocked and threw shade at Cody by throwing Christine and Nacho birthday party. So you guys may remember that 10 years ago at a sister wives tell all, Cody said that he was straight up disgusted by Christine eating chili nachos in the back seat of his car before they got married. And he was so grossed out that he almost called off the wedding because of, because of the whole thing. There's this disturbing clip on YouTube about it, and you can tell that Christine was really embarrassed and hurt at the time when he was saying this. Well, David, Christine's new fiancé, did his research 
and took a shot at Cody by hosting a nacho birthday party for Christine. He even hung little nachos on the wall, guys, and said, Happy birthday. I love eating nachos with you, my queen. Oh, the shade. Maybe I'm reading too much into it, but I think he means that, like, you know what? He does not care if she eats nachos or not. She's beautiful regardless. And, uh, yeah, another knife in the kidneys for Cody, probably. And something tells me, just kind of based on this, the subtle shade that David and Cody probably won't be hanging out anytime soon. Not sure if they're going to interact on the show or how that's going to go. The nacho event was for Christine's birthday, and her daughters also brought their mom out. Looks like it was Isabel and McKelty were with her, and then she blew out her candles at the restaurant. Christine turned 51 April 18th. Her zodiac sign is Aries. Fun fact. This was a huge, huge month for Christine. I cannot emphasize this enough. Her life is on a fast track. She got engaged to David after months of dating this month. They bought a freaking house together in Lehigh, and their wedding is probably going to happen very soon. I've seen reports that it's possible that most of the family, including Janelle, found out online that Christine was engaged and that perhaps they were caught by surprise. No idea if this is 100% true, but Janelle did write hooray in the comments, but uh, yeah, Christine seems to be beating to the sound of her own drum. According to In Touch, Christine and David bought a $770,000 home in Lehigh, Utah in March 2023, so like a month before their engagement, and it's a 4,200 square foot new build that offers unobstructed views of Mount Timpanagos, East Mountains, and Jordan River. It looks like these pictures from this balcony overlooking the mountains are from the new house, probably. It's a brand new house, super happy for her. And someone on Reddit made a Sister Wives reference to this, this image. And uh, leave a comment if you remember this. But they said, just look at the mountains. And the angels are really singing this time. Which, for those who don't know, the family chose Coyote Pass because some of the wives were going on and on about how the angels were singing there. And they would just not stop talking about the freaking angels singing. So the irony is that Christine's now back in Lehigh, a new woman more than 10 years later after fleeing Lehigh for Vegas. Last time she lived in Lehigh, she lived in the basement and took care of all the kids. Now she has her own new, completely new house that she doesn't have to share, the whole house to herself. It's really a full circle moment for her and a second chance. She's also moving full steam ahead, planning her wedding, and has issued a call out for local designers and vendors. I would not be surprised if her wedding takes place in like a week and we just kind of find out about it. Christine is so into David that she even in expresses her love on the bathroom mirror, guys. Seriously. This is textbook honeymoon phase in their relationship. I just hope David is okay with dealing with, you know, family drama because it's coming, you know? David, Christine, and Truly also went to Universal Studios in California this month. They are taking like little trips together here and there. And now let's go to Janelle, who seems rather focused on her kids at this time. Some people think that Janelle and Christine are on the outs, but that's probably false, I think. Janelle actually flew to see Christine this month and the kids recently. She had said that her flight had been canceled because of wind, so she had to go through Phoenix instead. This is proof that she was at Avalon, McKelty's daughter's birthday party. She's holding the twins and being a grandma, so she's been around. It's just that Christine is so consumed with her relationship that there's probably like less space for Janelle right now, you know? There was another brown birthday this month, and that was Garrison's. He turned 25, and Janelle and Savannah crashed his birthday party. Literally, under this picture, she said, 
Savannah and I crashed the brothers and cousins' birthday party for Garrison. He turned 25 on Monday, and all he wanted was to have the guys come and hang out for the weekend. It's so great when brothers and cousins are your best friends. I mean, that is cute. Looks like Logan and Hunter even came down from Vegas for the occasion. And even Peyton was there. He has expressed that he's the closest with Garrison. And they were together a lot growing up. I think they're very close in age. And apparently growing up, Peyton would always ask to go to Janelle's house where all the boys were because Peyton only had sisters. Janelle is also still working on her fitness and tried out Pilates. And she posted herself in what she said was a scary position. She's trying to get more flexible, you know. I'm wondering what Janelle is going to do. Will she stay in Flagstaff? Is she still even considering Coyote Pass to get a house on it? What is happening with that? As for Mary, well, basically, she's becoming, or to me, I mean, she's trying to become like an inspirational social media person. You know the type. I mean, I don't know if that's what she's really trying to do, but she's been sharing a huge amount of quotes and inspirational content on TikTok too now. So I thought maybe we could play a game called Write Mary's Quotes. So here's one. Who I was does not dictate who I am and who I am becoming. Okay, I actually do like this one. You know, it's deep, it's deep. I think it's good. Number two. Your crown has been bought and paid for. Put it on your head and wear it. Oh, okay. I mean, that's like, that's from Maya Angelou. I like the first one better. And number three. You have been assigned this mountain so you can show others that it can be moved. Ugh, I get it. But I, I think, you know, I don't really want to move a mountain. You know, like, too exhausted. <laughs> Uh, so the first one wins for me. Let me know what you think in the comments. Mary seems to be like literally this motivational speaker, Mel Robbins, and she likes Mel Robbins. She mentions her. So feel free to look um, this person up on Instagram. Also wondering where Mary will go. Will she stay in Flagstaff? Leo is in Denver and, um, you know, yeah, her B&B is in Utah. I don't think there's anything holding her to Flagstaff anymore, really. I mean, she could easily move. It'll be interesting to see where everyone goes from here. She also continues to do Fridays with friends with her BFF, Jen. And last time they did it, they didn't really disclose where they were. Uh, so that was interesting. Also, I don't know why, but apparently there were fans or an article or something saying that Jen and Mary were maybe like together or something. So she felt like she had to clarify to people that she is straight. I'm kind of annoyed for her. Like, can't she have a friend without people thinking it's something else? I mean, come on. People will just say anything. That is ridiculous. Like, come on, people. Come on. All right, guys. And we're still waiting for more details about season 18. But um, word on the street is that Christine's engagement will be in there. And... I don't know, like, it, maybe there'll be a wedding special. I don't think it's out of the question. All right, guys, let me know your thoughts on all this. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. And I will catch you guys next time with more Sister Wives news updates and tea. Bye, guys! Major Sister Wives news alert! It's official! Christine and David are engaged and getting married probably pretty soon, guys, after dating for an estimated six months. And she started planning, apparently. So the announcements came with a People magazine article and an official TLC announcement. And maybe slight shade towards Cody, probably, maybe. Christine said, David treats me like a queen and tells me I'm beautiful every day. I've never been in love like this before and the world seems like a brighter place with him in it. I'm so excited for the wonderful adventure we are going to embark on for the rest of our lives. And cue the multiple mentions about how he is the love of her life. And basically, Cody was not. 
I mean, is that slight shade? I mean, the whole never been in love like this before. Remember when Cody said at the tell-all that men probably won't like the fact that she's left a good man or something like that? Well, who's laughing now? Who is laughing now? Just saying. David even posted on his Instagram and said, Every day when I look at you, I can't believe I'm the luckiest guy in the world because I have you. You are the most loving and caring person I have ever met. Christine is so in love with David, she's even writing about it on Washroom Mirrors. I mean, I'm literally serious. This is from David's Instagram. So they're definitely in that honeymoon phase still. And side note about David, his profile picture on Instagram is kind of giving me creepy vibes for some reason. He looks so much better in all the other pictures. Don't you guys think? Like, message to David. Change your profile picture, please. And it looks like they will be getting married sooner than later. Literally a day after announcing their engagement, Christine is already looking for wedding vendors in Utah, which kind of tells me, like, you know, she's in a hurry or they're in a hurry to get it done. She said, We don't always get second chances in life. I'm blessed to have found mine. To have found my happily ever after. It's time to plan a wedding. I'm asking for any Utah locals for help. Our wedding cake, flowers, more, and most importantly, my wedding dress. Please reach out and DM me your info if you're in Utah. Local designer, artist, or owner and can help me with my wedding. So excited to plan this blessed day with David by my side. Anyways. So at this rate, I literally would not be shocked if the wedding is like next month or next week. Anyways, it's coming. I just hope Christine finds a wedding dress she likes this time and that her wedding isn't sad like she described it with Cody. She deserves the best wedding ever. Such a whirlwind, guys. Seems like she's planning already. This wedding is imminent and I'm sure will be filmed. I mean, they have to film it. And that begs the question, you know, who's going to attend? Who's going to be there? I mean, my money is not on Cody and Robin. Mary, I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't think so. Um, but probably the older kids and Janelle for sure. And although we don't know how Cody and Robin took the news, people are reacting to this engagement. Janelle said, yay! And McKelsey clearly seemed supportive. Gwenlyn posted something about twinsies because now they're both engaged at the same time. Seems like fans are mostly happy for Christine, but there are some that think maybe things are like moving quickly. On Reddit, someone had said, and for God's sakes, don't let Cody officiate. Can you imagine how cringesly delicious that would be though? And for sure, don't let Cody dance at her wedding. I mean, I like the Brown family dancing, though. It's entertaining, but I really doubt Cody's going to be there. That would be, like, almost, like, inappropriate, right? Everyone would be thinking, like, knife in the kidneys. <laughs> Anyways, someone else said, Oh, I hope so. I hope they filmed him propose, film the wedding planning, film the wedding, and hopefully they get at least an 11-day honeymoon in a better location than San Diego. So this actually made me laugh because remember the hoopla with Robin and Cody needing this 10 day honeymoon while she was pregnant. It was like a whole thing. So yeah, like time for Christine's 10 day honeymoon somewhere cool. Christine is very much in the seize the moment type of mindset at the moment. She was married to Cody Brown for nearly 26 years and you know, let us know she was in a relationship a hot second ago in February and now she's engaged, like literally getting married any moment. I can only imagine what Peyton, her son, thought of all this. He publicly said that he thinks they're moving fast and that apparently other people in the family think so too. There's like concern. Um, anyways, everyone's happy for Christine with some people just slightly concerned about how fast they're going and and stuff but uh, from what I see in my comments everyone's very supportive of what's going on even though it is really fast I mean it's gonna be good TV right very good season 18 here we come right 
All right, thanks so much for listening the whole way through, guys. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Bye.